about this mic. Good morning and welcome to our family life class. Um, you are in a good place this morning and so we want to just welcome you um, for our our Bible, I mean our family life class. Um, it's official. I am wearing glasses. Um, I'm not going to be able to get around it so um, we'll deal with that. Let's uh, lift our Bibles and make our confession. This is my Bible. I can be what it says I can be. I can do what it says I can do. I'm about to receive the life-changing seed of the Word of God, and my life shall never be the same. Because I came to believe, and where I have need, I came to change, and the devil cannot stop me. By the help of God, I shall believe, I shall receive, and I shall be changed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are, as always, we're going to start with our um, description or our definition of marriage, and then we will uh, go from there into our topic. So as a reminder, the definition of marriage is that marriage is a divine institution that is created by God whereby two rational, free, moral agents who are born again, they choose to enter into covenant with another imperfect person for a lifetime. And so we always want to be reminded of that because this is God's institution. This is what God has created. And so because he has created it, we have to, in all, by all means and in all areas and every aspect of marriage, uh, whether it be our individual responsibilities or our collective responsibility, we have to always be, re be reminded and be sure that we are following the guidelines that God has put in place, the standard that he has put in place because it is his his institution and he knows how it will best operate and best function so I'm telling you, old age it's you know it's it <laughs> it catches up with you um, so what should our topic for today what should you do if you choose to follow God and live righteously but your husband threatens to leave you if you continue. Again, I want to remind you that these questions are not made up by the panelists, uh, by our pastor. These are questions that were, are actually being sent in by members of our congregation. And so these are very real things, very real, very, very real. The, things that presents itself in life and these challenges. And that's why we, we always remember to encourage those who are unmarried, listen and listen good and take it to heart. And those who are married, listen and listen good and take it to heart and apply the things that God is, is, is instructing. It's not that we haven't been instructing. These are some, some consecrated uh, efforts. But in everything, just always take heed and yield to the word of God. Listen, be attentive, want to listen, and want to apply the word. So what should you do if you choose to follow God and live righteously, but your husband threatens to leave if you continue? I just want to first first start off with 1 Corinthians chapter 7. So if you would turn there to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Um, it's, this is clear. It's clear that you should continue. We're going to chase it down today with the remarks of all of the panelists, but let's start here. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And we're going to start with... Um, Let's start with verse 10. And unto the married, I command you not, not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest, speak I, not the Lord, if any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if 
he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. And let's stop right here. So we already see, we see here that it is not, and, and, and it says that if the spouse be pleased to dwell with you, don't depart. And so we need to be reminded of what pleased is. So pleased is not just agreeing or consenting to stay. Pleased is not just agreeing or consenting to stay with someone, but it is also having a pleasure to stay. It is also being content to stay. That's what, that is what uh, uh, being pleased to stay with, that's, it encompasses all of that. So not only do you have to agree to stay, but you have to find pleasure in staying and you have to be content in staying. So if you're not, if, those, if the, all of those aspects are not, are not present, then they're not pleased to stay. And so again, then it says, then it says, but if, verse 15, but if the unbelieving, and I'm going to say, if you're, if you're choosing to live righteously, which you should, if you're choosing that, then that's who you are. That's who you are. So if a person sees that this is who you are, I'm choosing to live righteously, I am the righteous because God has said that I'm righteous and, and, and I'm following that. That's who you are. And if they're not accepting of that, then they're not, they're not accepting of you. And ultimately, and don't even and listen, listen, I know it's hard to, but don't even don't take that personally. Don't take it personally because it's the God in you that they are rejecting. So ultimately, they're not rejecting you. They are rejecting God. So you can't compromise who you are. You can't compromise that. It says, what, what should you do? Bottom line is, you should, should continue in your righteousness. What should you do? You should be still and know that God is still God. What should you do? You should continue to live righteously and you should continue to do your godly responsibility as a wife. That's what you should continue to do. As long as he is willing for you to do your wifely duties, you still, cook, you still clean. Whatever it is that your responsibility is in the household, you continue to do that. However God tells you to treat your spouse, regardless of what they do or what they say, you continue in that. That's what you do. And you allow God to be God. And you allow that person to do whatever it is that they're going to do. I know it's difficult. It's difficult and I speak from experience. I understand that it hurts when you want your marriage to work and you want that spouse to love you for you and you want your marriage to work the way that God intends for it to work. I understand that. And then the other person is not willing to do the same. I understand that, but you have to make a choice. Understanding that the marriage is a marriage when there are only, when, when two people agree. You can't have a marriage on your own. You can't have a marriage by yourself. So you're gonna have to decide and reckon that who you, who you are going to be true to. Who are you going to be true too. If God, God has never threatened to leave you, no, no. not like your spouse. God has never threatened to leave you. So you need to stay with the one who will always stay with you. Amen. As I'm reading this question, you know, obviously it says, what should you do if you choose to follow God and live righteously, but your husband threatens to leave you if you continue? And so first of all, uh, 
you know, we, we realize that these questions are, are being submitted by people that truly want help in their marriages. And, and uh, you know, when I, when I read this, uh, you know, of course, it, this is, a, you know, a wife or, or a sister in the Lord that's, ask, that's asking this question. And I just want you to know, sis, that, um, you know, you're not alone. You are not by yourself in this thing. I mean, this, this question, it, it speaks to, um, you know, threatenings. It speaks to fear. You know, I got to believe that there is some hurt that's there. And I just want you to know that, that, that you are not alone. In this, this Christian fellowship, in this Christian community, we will not allow one of our own to go on and to be hurting and to be by themselves. And so I encourage you, you know, I, I know that what's inside of the house is inside of the house, and, and these things are private, but reach out, you know, to just one person, um, and, and, and one, one woman of covenant, right? And if you don't know who the women of covenant are, then I'm sure if you're on Facebook, they can just put in the, in, in the chat, you know, I am a woman of covenant. You know, reach out to a woman of covenant and, and, just, and just, you know, let, let her surround you with love because God loves you, but you're going to need to feel tangible love as, as you go through this. And, and, and as, 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 uh, as Minister Stinson pointed out, you know, we, we can't say what the end of this is going to be. But, but what you have to be assured in is that God is always with you, is that God is always with you. If you go to Hebrews chapter 13. Just this particular passage of scripture, Hebrews chapter 13. <clears throat> starting with, uh, with verse four. It says that marriage is honorable in all, in the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So God, God's favor is on marriage, and God is for your marriage. He says, let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So God, God is saying that there has to be contentment. And as, as, as the minister pointed out, your marriage is, is with two people, two imperfect people. If both of you can't find pleasure, if you can't find contentment in marriage, then it's, it's, it's not going to be successful. And then, then what I like about this last, because we know that God will never leave us, that he'll never forsake us, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Listen, you wrote this question and you were looking for answers. You knew who you were asking this question to. You knew that you were asking the men and women of God what their response was to this question. And we want you to know that, look, now you're free from fear. Now is the time for you to mark the day where you can be free from fear. Free from fear. Walking in the Lord. You know, as, as you look at this and you know, one of the things that we want to point out that, that Minister Martin had pointed out in one of his earlier teachings is that a, as a child of God, you deserve to be safe. So you need to make sure that, that, you know, we don't know what all else is going on in the home, you know, but when people resort to threatenings, usually there's other actions that are associated with that. There's other acting out that's associated with that. So you, you deserve to be safe. So make sure that you are in a safe and a secure environment. And that's why I told you, you need to reach out to one of the women of covenant to put their arms around you. We, we are there. You are not alone in this. Also, you're going to have to have a conversation with your husband. You're going to have to have the conversation with your husband. I, I would say you're going to have to have a conversation with this brother, but, you know, the way that he's acting, I don't know if I can call him a brother or not. You're going to have to have a, have a conversation. And these, this is the... This is the, 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 the um, the key points that, need to, to, that you need to bring out in your conversation. First of all, in your conversation, you need to make sure, and, and again, when you're having this conversation, I know that our tendency is that we want to be understood. I know that our tendency is that we want people to see our point of view, but you have to understand, this, this is like, a, like in, in a court of law, this is, this is a, a hostile witness. This is not someone that's, not, that's necessarily going to be... Um, attuned to or, or, or willing to come to an understanding. And so you just need to be a witness. So just think about this. As you're having this conversation, 
you're not, you're not necessarily looking for understanding. If they understand, they understand. But you're, you're saying, look, I'm, I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to make sure that you know. Because scripture teaches us that if the watchman warns of the evil to come, then they're guiltless. Right? And, and the evil continue in their ways. Once the watchman is given the warning, now you're free. So you're going, to be, you're going to be a witness. And this is what you need to let them know. First of all, you need to let them know that, that I heard what you said. I, I, I heard, I, I'm not in denial. I'm not trying to bargain. I'm not trying to, to convince you that you didn't mean what you said. That I, I heard exactly the words that you said. I'm not, I'm not in a state of anger because you said what you said, right? You have control over your tongue. You said what you said, and I heard what you said. I heard what you said. You are a real person. You exist. Your, your opinions are real. And I heard what you said. But let them know that I believe what you do. I will believe what you do. You say these things, but when you start acting a certain way, then I'll know. Then, th then I'll know that you've already made your decision. I mean, you say what you say, but I'll believe what you do. I will believe what you do. You keep coming home every night. You, we keep waking up in the same bed. You know what? You said that, but, but it seems like you're not really convinced because I'm going to serve the Lord. Right? I'll believe what you do. And brothers, if, 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 if it was you that made that statement and, and you just made it out of foolishness, you know, Nabal is your name and she knows it. You, 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 you're a foolish brother, and your wife knows you are a foolish brother. But she chooses to stay with you. Listen to, listen to her words. Listen, listen to her words. Listen, just because you're foolish, just because you're young, right? Just because you're, you're immature in the things of the faith, that's not a reason for divorce, right? But listen to the witness that's coming to you now. Listen to the word of God that is coming to you. Listen, they need, to, they need to hear, this is the witness that they need to hear, is that, is that you, you're not going to try to get them to do anything that they don't want to do. You are not going to try to find a middle ground. You're not going to try to find a, a, a point of concession or a point where, where we, can, we can agree to, to, to live holy on these days and we're not going to live holy on those days. We can agree that, that I'll live holy, but I'll let you bring all kinds of sin into this house. No, we're not, we're not, there, there will be no compromises. We, we will not split the difference. There will be no compromise. But I, I'm not going to try to get you to do what you don't want to do. If you're, not, if you're not pleased to be here, then, that, then that's your decision. And, and also let them know that, that you've already made your choice. That you choose to serve the Lord that you choose to serve the Lord, that you choose to serve the Lord. Now listen, this, this is, is a very difficult thing to say. It's a very, very, it's, there are a lot of emotions that are involved here. And yes, you have the right to have your emotions. Your emotions are valid, but you have to step away from your emotions. You're gonna have to step away from your emotions and stay with your witness and with your testimony, right? Your testimony is much greater than the test that you're going through. Your conversation cannot be influenced by the conflict that you're currently facing. You have to be steadfast, unmovable in all things, trusting in the Lord. And how do you act towards them? You're going to continue to submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. So as God is love, you show love. But listen, God doesn't make you do anything. God doesn't threaten you with anything. What he does is he shows forth love. And to the extent that your husband is not showing forth godly character, then you're not going to be able to submit to him in those areas. But where, where, where you can, you should. You should, because the marriage is honorable in all things. God knew that you were imperfect at that altar. 
He knew that you were imperfect when he made you. That's why he sent Jesus Christ. And until both of you, both of you accept Christ as Lord and Savior over your lives and over your homes, then your marriage won't be whole. Your marriage will not be whole. And I don't know if you all have any other, any, any other um, things that, that you think that, that the wives should, should do to make sure that they do in terms of being able to um, deal with the situation. Well, I, I think you kind of said it, uh, Minister Everhart. Your conversation has to be a godly conversation, your lifestyle. Let me say it like that. Not just what you say, but what you do. And I know it's, it's conflicting because you're choosing to live righteously, but the person closest to you that you're living your life with is saying, if you, don't, if you, do, if you live righteously, then I'm not going to be with you anymore. But the thing about it is God, God is bigger than that than whatever the that is. And in this case, is the, the husband threatening to leave. So you have to remember at the end of your days, you're, you're going to see God. And you, God is going to say, so this relationship was bigger than me. This relationship was the thing that you chose to be your God. And it, like you said, your feelings are real. You know, as, as we're studying this out and we're, we're talking about this, we're saying some things that are hard. I know they're hard to hear because they're hard to say. Because nobody wants to say, you know, you, you, you know in these questions, people, people are asking these questions, this is their life. And it's not like, it's not just a, a, a words on a screen. This is something somebody is going through. This is, this is our sister. This is our brother. This is someone we love that's hurting. And we don't want you to hurt, but also we want you to know what God is saying. So in that, in that there is conflict going on inside of you, but you have to choose God. You have to choose God and choosing God is not just it starts internally, but it's going to work itself out externally. So when the time comes and you're having that conversation and you're, you're speaking and that person and your husband, he acts Nabal, he becomes he becomes Nabal. You still got to remember who you are in Christ. You got to, and, and you know, it, it's real easy. It's real easy. Somebody, especially, especially people close to you, you know, your family and your loved ones, they can get you there in a quick second. They say something to you and you're like, whoa, and you got to pull back and you got to wait. But I'm a child of God. And you, you know, you have to, you have to take whatever, like uh, Minister Everhart just said, put yourself in a safe place. Get yourself in a safe place. And sometimes a safe place is just going to the bathroom. And getting away from the conversation because you're not ready to have that conversation in a godly manner. You, you're like, I want to deal with this, but I got to deal with this the way God told me to do it. And right now, I'm about to be all up in the mess with you. And you can't do that. Because when you get all up in the mess with, with them, you're no longer living righteously. And I know you're like, oh, well, I'm defending my faith. I'm fighting for God. And God's like, whoa, I'm fighting your battles. So step back. And, and you know, that's... That, that's what God has been showing me a lot. A lot of times when we think of praise and worship, when we think about worshiping God, we think of bowing down those things we don't like, you know, that, that we know are sin. But God is saying, bow down that attitude to me. Bow down that emotion. Bow down that reaction that you want to have and let me show you what you should do. And let me tell you, this is not like, oh, well, hey, that sounds good. I'm going to do it. You're going to have to think about this. You're going to have to purpose this. It's going to take, it's going to take prayer. It's going to take some consecration. Like uh, Minister Everhart was saying, you're going to have to put your, surround yourself with people who you may not be seeing. You may not see them do it, but you know they're doing it by their walk. So you're going to have to on purpose walk in this, in this thing. And, and just, you're going to have to, it's, it will take patience. It will take seeking God. It will, you know, you're, you're living with your spouse. You're going to have to fast because that you, you have to get the flesh under because at any moment, it's not like you just not like somebody at work that you just see every once in a while. This is the person who's always there. You have lots of connections to. So you're, you're going to have to purposefully and put put in the work to get this done. It's not going to be like, oh, well, now I'm deciding to do it because at every situation, in every turn, the adversary knows this. So the adversary is like, let me, let me pull him off focus. Let me just pull him off focus. So he's going to send everything that he can. So you have to be prepared to stand in those times. So uh, a couple of things that I just want to add to that is that um, minister and minister 
Eberhardt has already said it, is that when you have this conversation, um, simply put, this is what I am choosing to do. You can use the scriptures, and, and going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it, it, in verse 22, it says, For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's freeman. So you're free because you're, you're called, you've accepted Christ, you're free in every area. Likewise, also, he that is called being free is Christ's servant. You are bought with a price, so be not ye the servants of men. So find the scriptures that talk about your salvation. Talk about what it is that, 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 that God means to you. Why you're doing what you're doing. Why you're choosing to live righteously. If they don't want to hear that, that's fine. Then you just simply say, like Minister Eberhardt says, that this is my choice. If they don't want to hear the scripture. Other things that practical things is that you need to just get in the word. You cling to the word. Again, this, you are hurting, no doubt. It's hurtful when, when, when your husband and your spouse says things to you like that, if you choose, trying to give you an ultimatum between, between, between choosing him and choosing God. I understand that. But you have to then cling to the word. Continue in your word. The word is cleansing. The word is strengthening. The word washes and it will, if you allow it to, it will wash away. It will cleanse all of that fear. It will cleanse all of that doubt. It will cleanse all of that because ultimately God is the one who takes care of you. And I know sometimes it's difficult. And this, and this is real because in your mind, in your mind, and what the enemy tries to do is try to get you to stick with the one that you see. Because, because he would try to make you think that the, the one that you see is the one that's closest to you. If he can get you to put God way up there or far from you and just concentrate on the ones who are around you, that's what he will do. But that is not our reality. God is more real than anybody sitting in the room with you. Anybody that you're talking to. Understand, if you, you're saved, so you know the power of God in your life. And God can do what no other man can do. No other man. And I don't know, you know, sometimes, like I said, fear, especially when you have children, you have, you know, this, you have that. My husband did a lot of things in the house. I'm not talking about like, you know, household things, but he did our taxes. You know, he did this, he did that. Part of my fear was like, you know, what do I do if he leaves? You know, I'm going to have to learn all of these things. I'm going to have to do all of this. I'm going to, but God, but God, reckoning in my, in my, in my soul, in my spirit, in my soul, particularly in my soul, it's in my spirit, man, you know, spirit man is always willing. That's what the word says, but it's, it's that the, the soul, it's the, those thoughts, it's, you know, those desires, it's those emotions, but I had to reckon in my soul that I was going to be okay because I was with God and God was with me. <laughs> and that, that is, that is the key. So you have to desire that your ways and that your life please the Lord. You have to, to say that my salvation is greater. And because, because I am free in him, that no matter what, Philippians chapter 4 verse, thing, verse 13, I can do all things. And we want to use that scripture for a whole lot of other things. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That was one of the scriptures that I held on to when I was going through what I was going through. That was one of them. So you just going to have to listen. It's not, again, and I've said this before, it's not easy. And sometimes it's easier said than it is done. I get it. But you can do it. You can do it. You are more than able because it is the God that is in you. It is the God that 
is in you. And it is the word that washes and strengthens. And it is the spirit of the living God in you that will help you get through anything that you will ever have to face. With him there, with the spouse there, or with him not there. And we're just going to have to be okay with that. Exchange. In this case, you exchange. You are exchanging the lesser for the greater. You're going to allow yourself to relinquish. If it comes to that, allow yourself to relinquish the lesser relationship for the greater relationship. And trust me, I am a living testimony that you will be okay. I just want to, uh, I have a scripture here, as you were te- uh, saying that, Minister Stinson, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19, it says, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as a faithful creator. So, yes, there are, there are things that you're like, well, what if this happens and what if that happens? And now a lot of times the what ifs are more, we're more afraid of the what ifs than actually what happens. So that, our, our pastor taught on the apprehension that you have. But understand, when you're, when you're in the will of God, you can trust him. He is a faith, our faithful creator. So when I think about him being my creator, and he's your creator too, he's all of our creator. First of all, he created me so he knows me. He knows me better than myself. He knows what I need. He knows what, what, how to give me what I need. You know, you, know you, you think about it, everybody learns differently, everybody acts differently. We all have different personality, but God knows all of that about you. And he knows exactly what you need, how you need it, how it needs to be given to you, and when. And he's done it to you before. You, 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 you're, can, you're walking with him. He saved you. You know he's going to do it. He's faithful. Hold on to that. Yeah. Then as your creator, why would you create something and then want it to um, be in distress or be hurt or be destroyed? So like Minister Stinson was saying, the enemy wants to get in your mind like God doesn't care about you. God is letting this happen to you. No, no, no. God is giving you the opportunity to stay with him. What he's saying is today he's giving you the answers. He's probably been giving you the answer over and over. He's probably spoken some things to you in in your private time with him. And now you're getting confirmation. And what God is saying is stay with me. Continue with me. What I have for you is, is in the continuing. Allow God to get the glory out of this situation. But God can't get the glory out of the situation if you quit. He's a faithful creator. He's the, he, he was there for me. He's there for you before you even knew you needed him. So now that you, you know you need him, it's not like he's going to change. You, you have to, it's almost like not even an option. It is an option not to continue with God. But as a believer, that's our responsibility. It's our responsibility. God has given you this life. Now you're to walk in this life. I'm not going to go to this scripture, but in uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, I'll, read, I'll say it again because you want to write it down. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, it talks about continuing in God, continuing in the faith. It doesn't matter in the situation. It's talking about Paul saying, if I come over here and see you, if I don't, you continue in the faith. If things change, if things don't change, you continue in the faith because it's not an option. Um, in the scripture, um, I do want to go to this one, uh, Matthew chapter 22 verses, um, 29 verse 30, because, um, marriage is a temporal relationship. We've learned that anything we can see, anything we can touch, anything we can experience with our senses is temporal. So marriage, even though it's for a life, it's a lifetime commitment, but it's temporal. There was a time in your life where you were not married. That's changed, and there's a time in your life that you won't be married, whether it is because of hopefully not divorce or death. You will, you're not always going to be married. So um, Matthew chapter 22, we're going to read verses 29 and tw- uh, 30. Jesus answered and said unto them, you d- Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So what Jesus is saying is there, marriage is not eternal. So choosing to live righteously and follow God, that is a decision that affects your eternity. 
So do not allow, and this is, this is I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to back it up and make sure you don't get unbalanced with this. Don't allow this temporary thing to cause you to forfeit that which is eternal. And in no way am I saying that you shouldn't care for your marriage, that you shouldn't love your husband, that you shouldn't submit, because God tells you to. In the Bible, we, we, this whole teaching, we did spirit, soul, and body about the family and walking righteously in your marriage. So God is not saying don't walk upright in your marriage, but what he's saying is there's something bigger and greater than your marriage. There's something that cannot deter you, cannot distract you. So, um, one other scripture, go over to Luke chapter um, 9. Because the things that we come up against, they are temporal. And the only way really to have success in this is to continue with God. Because he has the answer. He has the answer. He's given you the answer, it's continue with him, but he's going to work out every little detail for you. But if you get off of the path, you think about it, um, okay, here, here's a good example. So let's say you are on um, a scavenger hunt and you're getting clues. And they say, you're going to end up at this spot, but you have to go there a certain way and you have to bring all these items back. So you're going to like, well, I'm just going to go over there because I know where I'm supposed to end. I don't need all that stuff. But then you get there and you don't have anything that you're supposed to have and you can't complete the task. That's kind of the way it is with God. God's giving you, he's like, at the end of success in your life, but he's giving you everything you need step by step by step. If you decide, well, God, I'm at step C, and right now this, this, this is hard. It is, I can't handle it. I'm hurt. I'm just going to jump off your path, and I'll meet you back over that L. God is like, no, you won't, because now you're not on my path. So God wants you to, fo- that's it, it's follow him. Don't get ahead. Don't say, well, I already got the directions. I'll just go. No, you have to follow God. You have to continue with God the way he said. And no, I, we understand. We understand. There, this is real life. This is a real life situation. And there are, there's hurt, there's pain, there are emotions, there are connections. And it is easier said than done, but it can be done. Just, God just told you. God just told you he'll strengthen you. Um, Luke chapter 9, I'm going to just read verse um, 62. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. The goal is to stay with God. The goal is to stay with God. You you want to have a successful marriage. I, I know you do. You ask this question. But you're not going to have a godly marriage without God. You know, you know you, you, you're not going to have a wet table without water. You know, it's just impossible. So you can't say, you can't allow, once again, these things to change what God has said. Because in the end, it's going to be you and God. God is, that's, that's your eternity. And God, God is going to work these things out, but you have to obey him. He's going to give you the strength that you need no matter what happens. God says, be at peace. In that scripture that Minister Stinson read in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it says, if the uh, unbelieving part, uh, unbelieving spouse depart, be at peace. Mm -hmm. Be at peace. God has said, be at peace. You haven't done anything wrong. You're continuing him. So continue in God. Do not let those uh, temporal things stop you from going on with God. Because believe me, things are going to change. One way or the other, things are going to change. So continue in him and remember that God is for you. God is for you. Just remember, he's our faithful creator. He is for you. Keep your eye on that. So as you're having those conversations that Minister Everhart was talking about, keep your eye on God. God is my focus. I'm saying these words, but I'm sticking, I'm sticking with God. As, as you are going through the day and you're preparing your heart, stick, stay with God. Just stay with God because he's going to lead you. He's going to guide you. You really don't have any other option because the other option is destruction. So just stay with God. Continue with him. Amen. One thing I wanted to add is that, you know, as as Minister Castile, as the ministers both here have pointed out, is that, you know, quitting on God is just not an option. And so the the reason is, is because, I mean, you might think that you can compromise and and that you can maybe uh, settle for. But the only way that you can love your spouse is because you love God. 
the only way your spouse can love you is based on their love for God. The, 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 the love in the marriage comes from the love of Christ to his church. And so you, you can't have, you know, a godly marriage. You can't have a marriage that's based on true love if there is no love. And love, first of all, begins with God. Scripture tells us that, 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 uh, that, that all things are, are precept upon precept, line upon line. And God doesn't give it all to us at once, but it's, it's here a little and it's there a little so that we can understand. And, you know, so, so you know, if, if you didn't understand, I want you to understand today. You know, if your husband is immature and he's Nabal, he doesn't understand, you know, witness to him, testify to him that, that my love for you is only because of my love for God. You know, my love for you is so great that if you are, if you truly are the fool, but you come to your senses and you repent, I can still love you. I can, I can still love you. My love for you is greater than those words that you said. My love for you is greater than those things that you did. Right? Because my love is based on my love for God. And God knew me, who I was, the things that I said. And the things that I did, and he extended his love towards me, that he gave his life for me. And so again, let them know that you, you, you know, you hear what they say, but you're going to believe what they do. If, if, if they choose to turn away, to truly repent and turn away from those statements, then there, there, is, there is room in the marriage. There is room in love for your marriage. But if they, if they, don't, choose, if they don't choose to, just know that, that the Lord, he is your shepherd. That the Lord is your shepherd. And in him, there is no lack. There, there, is, no, there is no fear. There is no deficiency. There is no, 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 no thing that your children will be in need of. There's no thing that you will be in need of or that your house will be go lacking of. There are no opinions of men, of parents or aunties or uncles. That none, the Lord he supplies all of your needs, all of your needs, all of your needs. Amen. Amen. Well, God is faithful. Yeah. And um, I just want whoever asked this question or whoever's dealing with anything like this, just be encouraged. Just be encouraged. God is for you. He is not against you. And if God be for us, who can be against us? So, so keep that in your mind. Hold on to that family. We love you. That's, that's, um, we could say a lot more, but that's all we're going to say about it today. Um, and before, we, um, before Minister Stenson gives our closing announcements, we're going to just, um, just have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, you are glorious. You are mighty. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your word that you have sent us. Lord and we thank you that your word will not return to you void and we praise you and we pray for understanding and wisdom Lord show us how to appropriate this word in our lives that we may use it and it may bear fruit and it may show your glory in our lives and that we will be strengthened and we will continue in your word Lord show us what we need to do and how we need to do it in Jesus name we pray amen Amen. We just want to encourage you again to, to take the godly counsel, take it to heart, apply it, and I guarantee you that you will see um, God's goodness in your life. You will see his faithfulness in your life. We want to also encourage you to end with us at 845 on Sundays as we continue to address the questions that have been submitted. And lastly, we want you um, to stay tuned for our 10 a.m. service for another word from the Lord. Uh, be blessed, family.